Hey guys, it's Norman, the Missy finale of Arrow, Season 6, Episode 9, Irreconcilable Differences. And I was looking forward to this episode, but at the same time, as you guys know, I really have not been a huge fan of this season. I think, especially after coming off the high that Season 5 is, this season is really just paled in comparison. It has not been nearly as entertaining as that season was. And especially where we were at this point last year is very different from where we were, where we are at this point this year. I mean, this, this year, I don't really feel like much has happened. I don't really feel like we've had much of a story going on. I mean, sure, there's been things happening, but... It's been very paper thin, and this was easily the worst episode of the season. I mean, I could not have imagined a more lifeless, repetitive, just very predictable finale. That's exactly what this was. We have seen this done so many times at this point, and honestly, I think it might be time to retire the show. I really think it is, because it is clear to me the show is running out of ideas. They're running out of interesting things to do, and... It's unfortunate because it has nothing to do with the cast. The cast is fine here. I have no problem with the cast. I think all the actors are exceptional in this show. But it's clear they're just running out of stories to tell. And we're just going to get into it right now because I, I do want to get into it. So we start off at Oliver and Felicity's wedding reception. And Oliver tells Thea that Felicity hasn't arrived yet. Thea complains that Oliver only invited Diggle to the ceremony. And, uh, you know, because he was the one who got them ordained, and Diggle comes over, apologizes because Lila couldn't make it, Felicity comes in with her parents, and Oliver goes to greet her, and I was shocked to actually see her parents were there, we haven't seen them in like two seasons, so just seeing her parents actually alive and well was very surprising to me, I mean, I knew her mother was fine, but her father, I thought was actually dead, I thought he died like in season four, but, uh, Donna welcomes Oliver to the family, hugs him, dramatically forgives them for eloping, and Oliver quickly escorts Felicity away, assures her that it's okay. They kiss, and Diggle leads a round of applause. Everyone starts dancing. Oliver and Felicity are chatting with a couple, Laura and Adam from Ivy Town, who we have no relation to whatsoever. We don't know who these characters are, and Oliver says they won't be returning to Ivy Town because Star City is home. And this is the first mention I think we've heard of Ivy Town. I don't think this is a place that we are familiar with, but Renee, Diane, and Theo are drinking at the bar. Curtis talks about his marriage to Paul. His friends ask if he's okay. Curtis asks them that he can handle other people's weddings, even though he's divorced, and she mentions her busted engagements and gets a text and quickly leaves. Curtis then tells Renee that Dinah has been secretly texting with someone for weeks, and we know that person is probably Vincent, which let me just say... Almost every event that takes place in this episode is extremely predictable. There's nothing here that I was, like, honestly shocked by. I saw pretty much everything coming, but Renee suggests that Curtis should possibly start getting back into the dating field, and his friend says he's been dating a lot of guys. So Quentin offers Oliver his congratulations, gives him a wristwatch as a present, and it's a really good scene. Paul Blackthorne and, you know, Stephen Amell, they always have had really good chemistry. I've always really enjoyed their scenes together, so this is no exception. I thought it was definitely a well-done scene. He explains that he gave it to him on his wedding day, and he doesn't have anyone to give it to, so he is handing it over to Oliver. So Oliver and Felicity then cut the cake. Curtis catches the bouquet. He gives this drunken speech about love and marriage, and uh, he just you know, he's too drunk to do it, so Renee takes the mic, he then gives his own speech, talking about how he and his wife fell when they were married, and this scene I really liked, I I've said it before, and I'll say it again, the dude who plays Renee is actually a really good actor, but they just have not serviced him well this season at all, he really hasn't had that much to do, and this seems like this show, that he definitely has talent, like, it's not that he's a bad actor, he definitely can act, and I really liked him in this scene, but the couple does their first dance, the others join in, Thea dances with Renee, says she thought a friend would come, but he didn't, Noah then thanks Donna, and, and I'm thinking that friend was uh, Roy, I think that's who she was talking about, which, again, just a slap in the face to viewers, we are waiting and waiting, especially because Colton Hanks is not busy anymore to see Roy, and the anticipation is just slowly waning, I'm starting to think they're just never going to bring this character back, even though Colton Hanks said he would be more than game to come back, the fact that they're not bringing him back is just really disappointing, and uh, I just hope they do it, and especially the way this episode ends, I really hope they plan to bring him back in the second half of the season, because like I said, I'm really starting to get disappointed with this. So Noah then thanks Donna for laying it back into Felicity's life. Donna says her daughter needs her father in her life, and this scene, it just felt very, um, you know, 
very elongated and something that we maybe saw in season four but the fact that we haven't seen these characters since now it just felt really awkward like it felt like they just kind of shoehorned them in here and Quentin comes over Noah realizing it's awkward excuse himself to get a drink so Donna and Quentin dance we realize that they are in fact still I'm guessing they're dating I'm not entirely sure at this point but they admit that it's very awkward and Oliver's lawyer Gene then calls Quentin excuse himself to take it and as they dance Felicity tells Oliver it's the perfect evening Quentin tells him that the prosecution smoking gun is a witness who testified that Oliver is the green arrow the information's under seal and they all know that it is in fact someone on the team so that's what we're dealing with here and the th problem is we saw this last season this is literally the same exact plot that we had in the last mid-season finale where someone was betraying Oliver and someone wasn't on his side the difference is, last season, there was a lot more urgency because Prometheus was such a constant threat. You knew Prometheus was going after someone. You knew Prometheus really did mean business. It was something fresh. It was something new. Here, they're just retreading the same exact elements from last season, except the urgency is just not as grand this season because not as much has happened as it did last season. Last season, at this point, so much had gone down, and this season, it's just not that way at all. So, all Diggle and Felicity go to the bunker. Oliver insists it's a betrayal. It's another Evelyn Sharp situation. I love it. He literally says that, showing us that this has happened before. Like, this is not something new. He doesn't think that they should have trusted the others, and Felicity runs surveillance on all three of them, and I thought we were past this. I thought for sure that Oliver was on good t in terms with all the team, that he didn't have to worry about them, you know, waffling to the other side, and now it seems like that's not the case, that maybe he should never have put them on the team, and Oliver warns just the service of a betrayal he warns diggle that when he puts the hood back on diggle could be next like he could be the next target so renee takes a drunken curtis to renee's apartment curtis talks about how he'll be alone when he returns home he notices sunflowers in a vase and wonders if the vigilanticism is the thing that drove paul away or his lack of charm which again is something that we've already covered we already have gone on the fact that paul was upset that you know Curtis was a vigilante. He didn't want himself to get hurt. He just thought he wasn't, you know, that it was unsafe and that was the reason why they broke up. Or at least, that's what we were led to believe And again, the last mid-season finale. This is exactly what we saw last mid-season, is them breaking up. So, I don't know why Curtis is now questioning it, but he asked Renee if he ever thought his life would be easier without Team Arrow and Renee admits that he does and Curtis says that Oliver's only concern about getting his happy ending. He then passes out and Diana meets Vincent in an alley and I've said before, I I just don't give a shit about this story. He says that he misses her. She says the man she knew would never kill an innocent people. Vincent insists he would never kill an innocent person and dismisses the cop he accidentally shot as collateral damage. So Dinah says that Oliver brought her back and from a dark place. Vincent tells her that he's always cared about her and always will. She tells him not to contact him and leave town and she won't let him get away a second time. So Quentin then walks the home, finds Black Siren waiting for them. She says that James wants a word with Quentin and I've been a fan of Black Siren at this point, but James, on the other hand, besides Michael Emerson's performance, I just don't give a shit about, honestly. He's such a one-note villain, and especially compared to what we got with, you know, um... Prometheus last season, that's nothing compared to James here. James is the complete opposite. Prometheus was just such a layered villain, and he had a motive for going after Oliver, and this season they are trying to do that, but he just feels very one-note and not nearly as well-developed as someone like Prometheus was at this point. But anyway, she says that Jane wants a word with Quentin, and when Thea attacks her, Black Siren easily subdues her and knocks Quentin unconscious. She puts a phone in Thea's hand and then drags Quentin away, and this scene just made me wish that Black Siren was our villain here, because Katie Cassidy, you could tell, is just having such a great old time um, playing this character, and I really want to see her, you know, just as the villain. I think that, I thought that's where we were headed this season. I thought that's what we were going to get, but from the looks of it, it looks like she's one of, like, 50 villains which we're going to get into that in a little bit, but at the bunker, Felicity picks Dinah up on street cams, meeting with Vincent. Oliver wonders what else she's lied to the team about, and Diggle insists that Dinah won't betray them. He says that Dinah supported him during his injuries, and, I mean, Diggle does make a good point here, that there's no reason why they should be wary of Dinah, but Oliver tells them they have to protect themselves, so Thea arrives, tells the others what happened, explains that Black Star had left her alive to deliver the phone, and... James then calls and says he wants a uh, nano-aluminum amplifier. It's secured at Argus, and Oliver has to deliver it, or Quentin dies. Now, here's the thing. 
you know they're not going to kill Quentin. There's just no way they're going to do that. Paul Blackthorne is one of the biggest characters on the show. Even though he really hasn't had a lot to do this season, they're not going to kill Quentin. It's just not going to happen. So James will send the text the next night, tells Oliver not to tell Argus, and once James hangs up, Felicity warns they can't make a duplicate. They figure that James is using them to avoid Argus, and Oliver tells him to bring Renee and Curtis in, but not Dinah. So an agent lets Diggle into Lila's office. Diggle claims he's leaving a present for her, and once the agent leaves, Diggle contacts Overwatch, plugs a flash drive into Lila's laptop, and Overwatch confirms where the amplifier is. Renee and Curtis are in the building. They're posing as Janners. Wonder why Dinah isn't there. So Arrow then enters the building via the vents, and Felicity's in the train bin that Curtis is pushing. She shuts off the security system, warns Arrow that he only has 60 seconds, so he then descends into a room via a line, grabs the amplifier. Meanwhile, Renee is spilling his mop bar to slow down the two approaching guards. Curtis and hides Felicity just in time. The two meet back at the bunker, and checking the amplifier, Curtis confirms that it will magnify James's bomb 20-fold, and Oliver tells Curtis to sabotage the amplifier so they can get Quentin out, and Diane then comes in, realizes the team just got back from the field. Oliver says that they have to speak in private, and when she objects, Oliver tells her that he knows she's meeting with Vigilante, so Dinah says that it's none of his business, and Oliver tells her and the others that somebody on the team is betraying him, so she asks Diggle if he trusts her, and he says that he's sorry, so they pretty much think that Dinah is the one that did this, which I still don't necessarily get the reason besides the fact that she's been on her phone. I will definitely, you know, I will say I do think that is a strong enough reason. The fact that she has been kind of shady on her phone talking to someone, she could very much be betraying them, but she says she's finished. She starts to leave. Oliver then snaps at her, and Curtis points out it could be any one of them, and Diggle says the others checked out, and Oliver admits that all of them were under surveillance, and when Curtis objects, Renee says that he's on the testifying against Oliver, and and uh, basically we realized that it's Renee, which honestly I could have told you was going to be probably the most easiest choice, which I really didn't like. I don't like that it's Renee. I, I wish Renee would have sticked on the show. I don't think that they've really utilized this character well at all. Last season they did, but certainly not this season. They haven't really. Um... And I just think they really wasted the opportunity of using Renee. Honestly, I wish it was Black Siren. I, I, that's who I really wanted to be. I wanted to be Black Siren. I wanted to see this really epic scene between her and Oliver. And we just really have not gotten that this season. So Renee explains that Watson came to him, said that he has proof that he was Wild Dog. And unless Renee testified, she'd make sure that he never saw Zoe again. So he was basically forced to. And Oliver tells Renee to get out. And after a moment, he leaves. And uh, I thought Oliver would be a lot more sympathetic towards Renee. I get it that obviously he testified against him, but I mean, the whole season has dealt with the idea that Oliver has tried to be a father to William and him and Renee have had that bond in that way. And again, that's just something that's been very underutilized this season. I don't really think we've dived as deep into that as we should. I think these two should be a lot more closer because they do have such a mutual understanding of each other and they do are going through very similar circumstances and I don't know I just thought Oliver's reaction it just didn't really make a lot of sense towards this story. So Quentin wakes up, Black Siren points out that he shot her and left her for dead. She explains that James sent someone for her, and Quentin asks if she sees her own father when she looks at him, and Black Siren says she doesn't because her father died on her 13th birthday in a drunk driving accident, which this is the first we've heard about this. I wish this was something we could have found out a while ago, but Quentin says that she's just stuck knowing him, just as uh, James in. He reminds Black Siren that she kills Quentin if IRL reigns um, on their deal then she will be, you know, free to kill him. So the next day, Renee's eating in a food truck with Curtis and Dinah. He and Miss City screwed up, and Oliver was right to kick him off the team. Curtis points out that just the three of them were targeted for surveillance and says that it crossed the line. So Thea then approaches Oliver in the bunker after Felicity told her what happened, and Thea at this point is just dead weight. I mean, she just, she's not much of a character at this point. She's just kind of here. They use her when they need to, and it's disappointing. I really like Will Holland on the show, but like I said, I think they should have just killed her off because she just isn't really doing much of anything at this point but he points out that Renee kept a secret. He put his daughter ahead of the team and wonders how he can feel betrayed by someone doing what he's done. And Thea knows he's never sold anyone on the team. He tells her brother that he's doing the right thing, looking at things through Renee's perspective. She tells Oliver that Renee betrayed Oliver, but also gave the speech at the wedding. And Thea suggests that Oliver forgive Renee because Quentin needs the entire team. So Diggle comes in. Oliver tells him to have the entire team suit up. So the team goes to the rendezvous. Wild Dog thanks Arrow for bringing him back in. Overwatch reports it's a digital 
digital black hole and Arrow tells them to put their issues aside, get Quinton back without handling over the amplifier and James and his men are waiting inside. Arrow demands to know where Quinton is. The hacker agrees to let him talk by Quinton uh, by radio if Arrow sets down his boat. The others are in the rafters. Wild Dog wants to search the building. Overwatch tells them to stay where they are. Mr. Terrific then points out if she bugged Quinton like she bugged them, then they'd know where Quinton was. So Wild Dog heads off, and after a moment, Mr. Terrific goes with him. Arrow then puts down his bow, and James then gives him the radio. Quinton tells him not to endanger the city on his behalf, so James tells Oliver that he knows the amplifier is sabotaged, and he, um... <clears throat> tells Black Siren to kill Quentin and his men to kill Arrow. So, Arrow triggers flares in his bow, grabs it, he attacks the mercenaries, Diggle and Overwatch and tell the others to back up Arrow. Black Canary joins in, Wild Dog and Mr. Terrific say that they're on their way, they come across Black Canary and Quentin, she sonic cries and they take cover, and it was cool to see her as Black Canary, we have not seen that nearly enough this season, so I did think it was cool to see her as Black Canary here, but Caden escapes while Arrow and Black Canary take down his men, Overwatch gives him Black Canary and Quinton's position as they leave the building. Arrow then heads after them and more mercs than pin down Wild Dog and Mr. Terrific. The Vigilante engages them, and Black Canary stops, tells Quinn to run, cutting him free. Arrow arrives, Black Canary then blasts down some nearby barrels, and Arrow retreats, and by the time he returns, he finds Quinton alone. The others arrive, and Arrow tells Diggle and Overwatch that they're good there. But back at the bunker, Felicity reports that James and Black Siren have disappeared. Oliver asks Curtis and Renee where they went. Renee says that he made the call to move off the position. He says he wasn't going to let Quinton die because Oliver didn't trust them, and Oliver tells him that Renee had a second chance and broke their trust again and again his reaction here I just didn't buy it I didn't buy that Oliver would be this upset about it. I mean he technically was protecting his friend I mean he was doing a good thing I feel like Oliver would be a lot more forgiving in that way but he says Renee's off the team Renee walks off Dinah tells the others that they need to believe in each other she doesn't believe in Oliver anymore with that she walks out and Basically, both of them have now left, and later Vincent finds Dinah, asks why she reached out to him. She explains she needed a friend. Vincent says he can do that, and Renee then returns to the apartment with Zoe. She sees the sunflower is her favorite. He promises he'll never let anyone split them up again. And I don't even know where these characters are headed now because they're not on the team, so... Diggle says they can still undo what's been done, but Felicity sides with Oliver. Curtis tells them they can't have a team without trust, and they all spied on him. It means he can't trust them, and he's done with the team, so Curtis then walks away as well. Once he leaves, Oliver says they need to move forward. He figures that they need to find out who told James that they sabotaged the amplifier, and we see James, Black Siren, and Boots. They're all watching the bunker on the minicam that Black Siren planted during her assault two months ago, and Anatoly, Vincent, and Dragon then join them. Anatoly says that Oliver always pushed away his friends. Dragon asks if that's all of James's master plan, and we get the dumbest line possible where James says that it's only the beginning, and that is the way that this finale ends. So, like I said, guys, uh, needless to say, this was a very disappointing finale. I really was not a huge fan of this at all. And again, it's mainly because of the fact that all these plot points we've seen before, you know, last season, we were dealing with the whole who, you know, was the, who leaked, you know, who, who was ratting on Arrow, who was the one who was betraying them, what was really going on there. We eventually found out that it was, you know, Evelyn, uh, but that made sense. I thought Evelyn's reasoning made a lot more sense than, say, you know, Renee's reasoning did. I mean, I still get why Renee did it, obviously, because of Zoe and whatnot. I totally do understand understand that, that he basically was kind of put into a corner and he really didn't have any other choice, but the fact that Oliver was so upset about this, I just didn't buy. I mean, these two have had genuine scenes where, you know, you could tell that they both had very mutual circumstances, where they both had children that they were trying to protect and, you know, they had to make sacrifices for both of them. So I thought because of that, that Oliver would not have blown up as much at Renee, but he did, and now we're in a situation where literally Really, all three of them are now off the team, which I think is ridiculous. I don't know why Curtis left the team. It doesn't make any sense. Curtis especially, I don't know why he left the team. That makes no sense to me. Uh, Dinah, it seems like they just got rid of her because they didn't know what to do. But they're still going to be on the show. Like, they were in the promo for the upcoming episode. So, I don't even know what they're going to do with them now. What's the point with all that? I mean... 
Again, it's just really disappointing. I think they could have done a lot more with these characters. Renee especially has had, like, nothing to do all season, and uh, it's just very much uh, disappointing what they're doing there. But even more disappointing is what they're doing with the villains, because if this is the direction we're headed in, I am not excited for this, because there are way too many villains now. I mean, we're dealing with over six villains, and this was different when it was on Legends, and we had, you know, the three villains of Damien Dark, Eobard Thawne, and Merlin. Those were three villains that we already knew. Those were three villains we had a personal connection with. We knew them very well. I'm going to compare this to the Defenders with what they did with the Six Fingers. Um, you know, it's very similar to that, where you have this huge group that's all rallying against them, and they all have this one reason, but we don't know what the reasoning is, you know, James's motive is very unclear, so because that he's just not a very memorable villain, if Michael Emerson wasn't playing him, this would probably be the worst villain Arrow's ever had, and I do think he's still probably the worst villain they've had, because it's just so unclear, and all of this just makes me wish that Black Siren was our villain. I think she can stand out on her own. I don't think we need all these other characters. Anatoly becoming a villain is ridiculous. I don't get that reasoning at all why he'd do that. Um, I mean, sure, I understand that maybe he's pissed at Oliver for what he does, but I don't think he would join all these other villains. Vincent, I don't give a shit about. I really don't. They still never really explained why Vincent was after Oliver all this time. Dragon, I don't care about. I don't care about Boots. I honestly only care about Black Siren, and I guess Anatoly because... We know his character very well, but other than that, I am not at all on board with having, like, six villains and this, this huge team of villains. It's just going to make things really overcrowded and really overstuffed, and I am not at all into that idea. So that's definitely something I am not at all interested in. Uh, where we're headed next the, for the rest of the season, I have no idea, honestly, because... You know, Thea's not just going to instantly recover, so a lot of people are thinking, oh, she's going to go back to being speedy, but again, keep in mind, she's been in a coma for months, and there's no way she's just going to recover that instantly. She's going to need time to heal, she's going to need time to just be herself, and then eventually she'll go back to speedy. I'm sure we'll get to that at some point, but it's going to take a while. So honestly, I don't know where we're headed at this point. Oliver doesn't really have much of a team now, uh, which I understand people are saying, oh, he doesn't really need the team, but I think he does. I, I really think he does. I I like that he had the team. I like Black Canary. I think you need Black Canary on there. I think you need, um, you know, Roy's someone that needs to come back now, all right? He really is someone who I think is integral to this story. Thea's alluded to it. They've mentioned him so many times. Just bring Roy back because that will make things so much more worthwhile. If they're getting rid of all these characters just to bring Roy back, then that's fine. But if Roy doesn't come back, then I have no idea where we're headed. I have no idea what's really going to happen here. And I just don't really feel like the show really has that much more of a story to tell. We're dealing with the same exact storyline with Curtis we dealt with last season where Curtis is trying to figure out where things went wrong between him and Paul. I thought this was something he already dealt with. I don't know why he is questioning it again. The whole thing with Dinah, I just don't care about. I, if, if Vincent leads her to this, you know, sort of um, new sort of League of Assassins that's being, you know, I know the League of Assassins was disbanded, but if that's really where we're headed, I have no idea uh, even where the show is going to go. And at this point, like I said, I just think the show needs to end. I, I think they've gone on way too long. I think they know, you know, everything that could have happened to Oliver that's good has happened. He's married now. He's got a child. I mean, he, he had a whole team. You know, he was he was mayor. I mean, there's really nothing else that can happen in this show uh, except for a bunch of people to be killed and for everything to be stripped away from him, which I'm just not at all into. That's what we got last season, and I'm really hoping we don't get that this season because this is the same exact thing that happened in season season five. It just doesn't feel as grand or fresh because we've already gotten this story and James is not nearly as compelling of a villain that Prometheus was. And I think that really is the biggest problem with this season overall. It just hasn't really held up compared to last season. Last season seemed like it was a step in the right direction, like the show was going to get back on track. It was incredible. And then this season, you know, only Samantha dies. It's the only person that died and Theo was in a coma and Diggle had these tremors. And now none of those stories are really that important anymore. More. I mean, Diggle's still recovering, obviously, and Thea's now woken up, but those stories aren't even of much relevance at this point. Everyone's pretty much recovered, and the island, it's as if it, Lian Yu never happened. Um, 
Oliver's on good terms with William, so really, other than that, you know, besides the fact that we've had this whole, oh, you know, uh, Watson going after Oliver and her trying to out him as the Green Arrow and all that kind of stuff, other than that, there just isn't really a ton of stuff going on um, this season, and it's just not nearly as interesting as some of the other ones have been, and because of, like I said, I just have not really been into it. Out of all the CW shows, to be honest with you, Arrow was the strongest, but it's quickly turning into the worst. It really is, because it's just really starting to fizzle out. It's starting to become a lot less intriguing, and it's unfortunate because I really thought they were heading to a much more positive, fun direction. I thought that's where we were going to go this season, that maybe, that you know, because last season was so dark, this season would be a little bit more fun, and it doesn't appear that's the case. It appears we're just back into the dark territory, which we already dealt with last season. Uh, if this isn't the last season, then I don't really know where else the show is really going to go, because at this point, I just think they should probably end it. Uh, it's the best time to just call it quits. There really is no more story left for the show to tell, at least in my opinion. Like like I said, this was an extremely disappointing episode. So now I'm going to grade both the mid-season finale and the season so far as a whole. So for the mid-season finale of Arrow, Season 6, Episode 9, Irreconcilable Differences, I am unfortunately going to give the episode a C-, and the season so far as a whole, I am going to give a C+. Plus. So overall, guys, we're going to review the mid-season finale of Arrow. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode overall, let your thoughts. Like I said, guys, I'm not absolutely hating the show, I'm just really disappointed. I know they can do a lot better, and it's just honestly really frustrating, but that's in my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in my next video, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.